Okay, so this is going to be a video on Git pulls and more specifically Git pulling with or without the rebase option. So this is something that I've seen a couple of the developers on my team at work um, get mixed up on. Git pull works slightly differently than you might expect. Um, if you're using the default behavior, you're probably already used to it. But there's another way that you can configure Git pull to actually operate, which makes a little bit more sense. And a lot of the online documentation um, and like blog posts that I've read and things like that seem to indicate that the rebase functionality is kind of the way that it should have been all along. Um, but I'm going to show you how both methods work and what the practical differences are between the two, not necessarily the implementation, but practical reasons that you might want to use one versus the other. So I have this Rust project set up here. Uh, it's basically a hello world. Uh, if I go ahead and cargo run it, you'll see that's all it says. It says hello world. Um, I am in a Git project, right? So I'm updated it with origin master. And all this project does is just print hello world. That's it. Pretty simple. Now, in addition to this folder, right, where I'm inside of the hello folder, I also have three other projects. Um, these three, think of them as other developers, right? These are just local checkouts, but they could be checkouts on somebody else's machine where they did a clone of some kind. Um, but think of them as checkouts of a remote repository on somebody else's workstation, even though I'm doing all of this on my own workstation. So let's go and look at what's inside each of these. So I've got this Heyo folder in here. And if I do a git status, you'll see that I'm currently up to date with Origin Master here as well. If I do a git log, you'll see what the history of this project actually looks like. So my initial commit was just basically a hello world commit. Actually, let me do a git show so you can see what those look like. Here we go. So the initial commit was basically just incorporating all of the files of the project. Um, it was your initial check-in, right? Nothing was different. It was the default hello world. My second commit here was to change hello world to say hey -o world. That's the only difference in this project. And of course, I added some target directory files. I added the cargo lock, but that's basically the only thing that happened in this commit. And as you can see here, this is up to date with origin master. So this is what the project looks like in my repository right now, whether that's GitHub or Bitbucket or something private that you're using inside of your company for your team. Um, that's what the origin looks like. So that's the final source of truth. Where the project is right now is it says, hey -o world instead of hello world. Um, so both of these repositories, if you will, are both of these developers up to date. I have the person with the hello folder they were the one who initially checked in the project and pushed it. And then I have this person with the Heyo project. They made a change. They changed hello to Heyo. They uploaded that. That's done. Now that's in the origin. So both of these developers are up to date. Now let's pretend we are a third developer. And we're going to come in and make a change that will intentionally conflict with the changes made by developers before us. Um, and conflict resolution is really where you're going to see the difference between the two different pull methods. So if I go back up our directory, you see I've got two other folders in here. I've got Haya and I've got Yo. So let's go over into Haya in this window. And in this window, we're going to go to Yo. But that's OK. So let's look at the Git log in Haya. So as you can see, this developer, again, pretend that this is on some other developer's workstation, they had checked out the Hello project when it had been initially committed. So they're all the way back in time at the first commit. And they're behind, right? Because their fetch currently thinks that they're at origin master level with this initial commit, which was just hello. And if I run this project, you'll see it prints hello world, right? They don't have the heyo world change that was pushed up by a previous developer. Let's go ahead and make a change here. And let's do a pull with the default functionality of git pull, which is to not rebase. And let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to go and edit my source code. I'm going to change my hello world to, uh, let's see, let's do hiya world, because that's the folder that we're in right now. I'll save that. I'll run it. And you can see hiya world is now what it says. Makes sense. 
let's go ahead and add everything in this directory. We'll commit it. And our commit message will be Haya. OK, now I, as a developer, have made a change. Now let's say this is the current state that I want the project to be at. I want to share it with the other developers on my team. I need to go and push it up to our origin, right? our remote repository, where we're synchronizing all of our work. Now to do that, of course, if somebody else has changes in the remote, you're going to have to pull first before you can push. So if I tried to push, I'm probably going to get an error. Yep, you need to pull things first. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. Now, if we look at the commit log, don't forget, I started out at hello, right? That was the initial commit. That's what origin master is on. My current head and the master branch are pointing at the Haya commit where I made a change. Now let's do our git pull. Now, if you haven't run git pull before, or you haven't specified any config defaults, it's actually going to tell you, hey, you have to decide how I'm going to reconcile divergent branches. And it gives you the two possible methods for doing that. The first method is merging, right? Rebase false. This is the default. This is kind of sort of how you've probably been using Git forever. Uh, when you do a poll and you have changes in conflict with somebody else's, uh, you're going to get a merge conflict. You're going to go and modify your code and their code to reconcile those changes. And then you're going to do a commit, and it's going to add a merge commit. Your second option here is rebase. I'm going to talk about that option in a little bit. We're going to take a look at what that looks like. But for right now, we're just going to say git config pull.rebase false to specify how we're going to reconcile that pull. Now let's try our pull again. And as expected, we have a merge conflict, right? We know that we changed the same line of source code that a developer has already changed when they pushed to the remote. Makes sense. This is run of the mill Git. If you've done anything with Git on the team, you've encountered this before. So let's go and fix our merge conflict in our main.rs. And you can see here the change that I made on head, my Hio world is in conflict with the change from this commit, which I am pulling, which says Hio world. Uh, for the purposes of this exercise, I'm just going to go ahead and accept both changes and save that. So basically, I am keeping the developer's original line of code there and incorporating my own. Uh, that's totally reasonable for the purposes of this application. I, as a developer, is saying that's fine. That's the way that it should be. We'll save that. Uh, we'll test it. And you can see it prints out Hiya World and Hello World. Seems fine. That's kind of what I told it to do. Uh, and now what we need to do is commit the result, right? We even got those instructions from Git. So we'll go ahead and git commit. And you'll see we're creating this new commit. We're going to merge our branches together. So I'll go ahead and save that. OK, now let's look at our Git log. This should look very familiar to you. We started with our initial hello commit. This was the initial commit. And this is what we had checked out from the origin previously. Uh, we made our Haya change, but it put it up here after this change that origin master was on, right? So Heyo is down here and Haya is up here. And then all the way on top of this, we have a totally separate commit, right? Our merge commit. This is the default pull behavior. We're going to add a new commit to the history where we reconciled our changes. This is a little bit strange once you start to think a little hard about why it works the way that it does. Um, let's go and actually take a look at some of these commits and see why they might not be what we want to do. So over in this window, I'm actually going to open the same Haya repository that I'm in right now. If I look at my git log, they're exactly the same. So I'm in the same directory. Let's go ahead and show this commit right here, my Heyo commit. And you see the diff for it was to change hello world into Heyo world, right? Pretty self-explanatory. We already knew that. We had already seen that in the commit history before. But then we have our commit in here, right? FDOB. Let's go ahead and look at that. Uh, B for B. 
So here's the Haya commit, which we introduced. And you'll notice something right off the bat, which it, it, you don't really, you might not notice it actually, but the change was made to hello world. That makes sense when you think about where we started, but not really where we want to be. So because we were basing our changes off of this hello commit, we were making a change to hello world. That makes sense. That's that's what the code looked like when we made that change, right? But when we commit to a remote repository and we want to share our changes with other developers, typically we want our changes to be incremental. We want our changes, anyway, this is true on my team, to be based on the other developers' changes. We don't really want everybody to be making changes that all look like they happened at the same time, because that's not really what happened. Some other developer made a change before I did. And this doesn't necessarily reflect that. What we're showing, and, and actually, this will clarify my point a little more. Let me go ahead and show you what that merge commit looks like. So we already looked at Haya. Haya is modifying hello. Let's look at this merge commit and see what that did. It added both lines. It changed both of them. So the resolution to this conflict was to create a totally new commit that blows away both developers' code and adds this new one, basically saying, I am the final source of truth. But again, that's not really indicative of our real life scenario. Our real life scenario was some other developer made a change chronologically before I did, if I am on this branch. I then made a change, which took place after that developer's change and should be modifying that developer's code, even though it didn't because I was out of the date. Now I'm going to show you what pulling with a rebase looks like and why it's a little more indicative of what's going on in actuality and why you might want to consider using it by default. So let's do that. So let's go back up. We're going to go into our Yo directory here one more time. Uh, this Yo directory, if I look at the log, it's still on the initial commit, right? It's looking at the hello history, or, or the hello commit, excuse me. So the message that this prints should still be hello. And it thinks that we're up to date with origin master because we haven't done a fetch in a long time. Let's go ahead and change that source code and intentionally introduce another conflict. This time we're just going to change hello world to yo world. Very basic. We'll go ahead and run it. And you can see it says yo world. So we changed the same line of code that the other developer changed way back when they made it say, hey yo, right? <laughs> but we haven't pulled that commit yet, so we don't know. So let's go ahead and take a look at our status. Let's add these changes and let's commit them. And we're going to say this was our yo commit makes sense. Now in our git log, we've got hello and we've got yo, which modifies hello. And we can even look at our changes. Yep, makes sense. We removed this line, replaced it with this line. Now it says yo world. Problem solved. Now let's do a git pull again. And we're going to get the same matches that we got before because we haven't globally configured how Git is supposed to do polls, but this time we're going to tell it to set rebase to true. So we're going to say git config pull.rebase true. Now, instead of performing a merge, a merge commit on top of our pull, we're going to do a rebase before we actually go and merge those changes. So we're going to set that. We're going to run git pull again. And we get sort of a similar message here. It's not exactly the same though. So here's some of the differences. Uh, obviously it tried to do an auto merge and it failed. And we knew that would happen because there's a merge conflict in our main source for, main source file, excuse me. Uh, and then we get this message, resolve all conflicts manually. Yep, that sounds similar. Git add them and then run, run git rebase continue. That's different. That's not like what we saw previously, where it just told us to commit, basically. So what we've done here is we've initiated a git rebase. Now, if you don't know a whole lot about how git rebase works, I highly recommend it. Basically, what you're doing is you're taking the tree of where you're working now, the root of the tree that your current work log is on, 
and you're putting it somewhere else. It's almost like replanting a git tree onto a different root, if that makes sense. Uh, I highly recommend you read this documentation. There's lots of information here about what that looks like. This is probably the best illustration. If you pretend that we were working on this branch here, that branched off of this Eve node, we're saying, OK, let's pretend, if you will, or rebase our entire branch to start off of the G leaf instead of the E leaf. That's a rebase. We've plucked up our entire tree of all of our changes, and we've moved the root to somewhere else along the line. And that's basically what we've started here. This operation is saying, OK, we're pulling these changes from the remote. Now we're going to pluck all of the changes we've made locally. Instead of making them on the past commit where we actually made them, we're now going to pluck them up and replant them on top of the commits that we're pulling down. We're essentially taking our work and putting it all the way at the top of the most recent history, which kind of makes sense, right? Because that's what we're supposed to be doing. Some other developer made a change before us. We're going to make a change after them, and that's going to be reflected here. So let's go ahead and finish resolving our merge conflict so we can see what this looks like. So I'm going to go into my source file. We get the same issue that we had before, right? Where um, I have Yo World. Yo World is what I wanted to put in here. That's the change that I'm trying to make. Then we've got Hey Yo World. Hey Yo World is what we're pulling from the remote. Now, one difference you'll see here from when we did the merge oriented pull earlier is head is actually pointed at the change coming in from our remote, right? The thing that we're pulling. That's simply because of how rebase works. Essentially, we've checked out this branch here, and now we're merging our own changes into that branch. So this is where our head is at. This is the change that we made in our previous commit, which we're trying to merge up now. So for the sake of this exercise, let's again argue that both of these are correct. We want to keep both developers' changes. We'll save that. We can go ahead and test this by running it. It prints out two. It says, hey, yo world and yo world. Order doesn't matter. That's just what I'm electing to do this time. Now, once we're done making those changes, instead of committing, we're going to say git rebase continue. And it's going to finish with the rebase operation. Let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let me see. Oh, whoops, I have to add them. There we go. Rebase continue. OK, cool. Now we get to the second part of the rebase, where we're going to apparently create a new commit again. But really what we're doing is we're changing the commit that we already made. So that's why the message in here already says, yo. That was our commit from previous. Let's go ahead and just save this message. And we'll let rebase continue. And it finished. So we successfully rebated and updated our master head. Now this is the interesting part, our git log. This is very different from what we saw previously when we were doing the merge pull. So you can see here, everything started at the initial commit, as usual, the hello commit. The previous developer who committed the heyo change that went before us is next in line. And then our commit comes after that. It was built as if it was on top of that Heyo commit. And of course, this is an origin master, and this is what our local master is pointing at and our head. This is what we want to happen, I think, in probably 90% of the merge conflict scenarios that we're in. Some other developer made changes before we did. We just didn't sync up in time, or we were developing in tandem with them. But now we want our changes to integrate with their changes or be based on their changes. And that means reconciling our code to work on top of the changes that they made. Instead of making this merge commit, which blows away both of our code and declares that it's the single source of truth, regardless of what came before it. Um, let me show you what actually these diffs look like as well, because this is really, really important. So if I go in here and I, uh, let me look at my get log list again. Look at that Heyo commit one more time. OK, so our Heyo commit, we've seen this already. But basically, we're replacing Hello World with Heyo World. Makes sense. We've seen that already. Now let's go back and look at our log. 
And let's go check out what our yo commit here looks like. Okay, this is crucial. Instead of this merge commit, where both lines look like they've been added, we have rebased our change to be on top of the hey yo world commit, which came before us. So our diff is just an added line below that. That's the only thing that's changed is we added some code on top of the previous developer's code. To me, in my mind, and the way that my team works, this makes more sense. It's just the way that we do things in real life, logically committed to our Git log. Um, so I really, really prefer this actually. Now, let me see. There was one other thing that I wanted to show you regarding this. Look at that Git log again. See if I get inspired. Oh, yes, I remember. So if you've ever used something like Git Bisect, Git Bisect is a really good tool. And if you haven't read about it, I highly recommend it. Let's take a look at it here. Git Bisect is a way of finding a bad commit, basically. Finding where something broke. If you have 10 commits and you know at commit number one, everything worked great, all of your unit tests passed, everything looked good in the UI, and then at commit number 10, everything is broken. I don't know why it won't run. This unit test is failing or some really weird obscure error that passed all of our linters made it in there. Git bisect is a way of finding that. We'll probably do another video on this at some point. But Git bisect will let you basically do a binary search in those 10 commits to find the commit that went wrong. And all you have to say is yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. It's a lot easier to use something like Git bisect if this is what your Git log looks like, right? You have a change made on a change, made on a change, and there aren't any weird merge commits in there which change the diff drastically and just merge together a bunch of people's code. Um, it just, it's more logical to me when moving one step at a time through Git bisect when your changes look like this and they're very incremental. So that was the other thing that I wanted to say, the other benefit that you get from doing things this way. So that's basically the difference between the two functions of Git pull. Uh, like I said before, I've read a lot of literature online watched a lot of uh, documentation that's sort of points towards rebase being the preferred behavior. Uh, probably it should have been the default, but for backwards compatibility reasons, it isn't. You, of course, can make it your default. You're not going to mess up the way your team works, right? You're perfectly welcome to use it. It's just going to change how you merge your changes. Uh, all you have to do is where we said git config before. This is just doing it for this local repository. You can also say global. Uh, let me see. <laughs> what was my git config command before? Yeah, here we go. Global. Pull.rebase is now true. And if I git config global list, uh, you can see my pull.rebase is true. That'll affect every place that I use git on this system. It's going to be baked in by default. Anytime I do a pull, it's going to default to rebase again. The behavior doesn't really change if uh, your changes are compatible. Uh, you're not going to notice a whole lot different other than maybe if you go and peek in the Git log. But when you're doing resolving merge conflicts or you work on a large team, you might start to see things make a lot more sense. So hopefully that was helpful. Uh, I'm Adam Carpenter. If you have any questions about this, leave a comment. Thank you very watching. Catch you later.